Greetings. Welcome to Into the Light. My name is Donald Schmidt, and the topic of today's show is Choose Wisely. Growing up, I made some poor choices. Um, I grew up in Ozone Park, Queens. I went to um, Bishop Lachlan High School in Brooklyn for a couple of uh, years, and then I I got out of there, and in junior year, I went to um, John Adams High School, which is on Rockway Boulevard. And uh, the way things were set up, the school was here, Americano Lanes was here, and Aqueduct Racetrack was here. So when the windows were open in the springtime, I could hear the bugler playing the, playing the and I was like, my friend Billy was behind me. He had the racing form. He's handicapping the races. We're in art class. We can't wait for it. It's a 40-minute class. Can't wait for it then. Get done. Get done. Run. Jump over the fence. And um, we were literally off to the races. And that went on. You know, I wound up getting a job at the track and... I mentioned on other on other shows, and I didn't have I didn't have a plan, and I didn't I didn't have a purpose. I didn't know that I didn't believe in God. I didn't trust God. I had some difficult times, and um, when I was growing up, or when I was um, when I was twelve, uh, my grandmother died. When I was thirteen, my best friend Peter died. And they had a they had a mass for him, and um, I went, you know, to pay my respects. But they had the sage from the, you know, from the the things that that they the censor or center or something. And I got sick, you know, and then, and now my new best friend was gone, and then a few years would go past, and I was sixteen and. My best friend Dougie died in an accident at a school. You know, and and God kind of went out the window. You know, I I didn't know anything about the Bible. I knew about beer. I knew about alcohol. I knew about whatever drugs there was. I knew about gambling. And I didn't care. And I, I met a woman in the early 90s, late 80s, and I went to church with her over on um, Myrtle Avenue in Glendale, near um, near Woodhaven Boulevard, you know, and she said to me, as long as you believe, you'll never be without. Because they, the, they passed a plate, and she put, she put 50 bucks in the plate. She made a choice. I didn't know it was called tithing. A tithe is 10% of all your income, you know, and she gave 10%. She made 500 a week. She put 50 in a bucket. So I put like five bucks in the bucket, you know, and I couldn't wait for church to get over. And she'd say, as long as you believe, you'll never be without. And I kept saying it, as long as you believe, I'll never be without. And I had had surgery on my knee. It wasn't a total knee replacement. You know, they they just went in, they cleaned it up. And I was on medication. And I think it was, um, it might have been Super Bowl Sunday. And I went home. And going up the stairs with the crutches. You know, I lived on the second floor. And I had $33 in my account and OTB and... I made a bet, uh, it's called the Daily Double, the eighth and ninth races. My horse ran second in the eighth race, but the winner got disqualified and they put me up and I wound up winning $800 for the day. And I kept on saying, as long as you believe, you'll never be without, you know? And she kept continued to go and everything. And I won a few times and I won like three times in a row. I said, this is great. I put five bucks in the bucket. I go to the track, all is well. 
But I want to share with you a verse in um, Jeremiah 29, verses 11 to 13. This is God talking to Jeremiah. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you shall call upon me, and you shall come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. Now Israel was going through difficult times. They were in captivity and everything, and Jeremiah was the only prophet that actually heard from God and he gave, he said, well, the, the other prophets, they were, a prophet is a, a man who hears from God and carries God's message to a particular audience. And um, like I said, I didn't have, I didn't have a plan and I didn't, I didn't have a purpose and I kept on putting one foot in front of the other and breathing, and in um, 94, my dad, my dad was diagnosed with cancer, and um, my mom was diagnosed with cancer a week later, and dad was in the hospital for like 26 days or something and, and wound up dying. And we used to, he used to like to bet on football and you have to make a choice. There's like a favorite and an underdog. So he liked the team and I, I, he wasn't doing real good. I had to leave work to come and he had died like three times and they brought him back and you know, he was on uh, heavy oxygen and he goes like, <gasps> I says, yeah, dad, what's up? He says, who's playing football? And I told him, I, I forget who the teams was. And um, he wanted to bet. So I call up the bookie and the, the topics choose wisely. He chose to bet, you know, um, I forget the name of the team. Might have been Oakland. And I call up the bookmaker and the bookmaker says, uh, what's up? I says, uh, he says, don't tell me. Your dad wants to bet the game, right? I says, yeah. So he bet the game. He won the game, he won like 50 bucks, and we were in a pool in the bar, and I used the 50 bucks to um, pay for the pool. And dad passed away like right after the game. He said he was gonna watch the game, and he watched the game. And the nurse, when, when me and my sister went, you know, up to, to, to see the body, said that, she sang to him as he transitioned out of this world into the next. And it leads me to believe that maybe because dad was doing really bad and this nurse quite possibly was a Christian, made a choice to ask my dad to accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. It says, um, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. And that can be found in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. So we, we lost Dad that day, but I, I, I kind of I believe in in deathbed confessions, you know, like when you're on your way out and you're in bad shape and somebody makes a suggestion, even if you, 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 you don't say it audibly, you know, God says, I, the Lord, search the heart and reward a man according to his ways, you know, and I believe that um, God has a plan for you. He has a plan for me. Like I said, I made some poor choices, and I had this friend, and he loved Indiana Jones. And uh, 
There was an Indiana Jones where they were searching for something that gave you eternal life, you would live forever, and if you chose wisely, you lived, and if you didn't, you met your demise. So, um, Indiana Jones, he rubs the lamp or something, and um, he says, you chose wisely. And then another guy come and you hear the screams like, Aah! and he goes, he chose poorly. And we always, we always have a, you know, a laugh, a laugh about that. But we're here, you know, we, we've gone through some rough times. It hasn't been fun, but it's been necessary. We were, we were cooped up in our houses for a long time. We'll go we'll, in March. It's going to be three years. You know, and and um, it's what we do with the time. You know, we make a choice. I didn't always know about the show here, and I made a choice to set aside one day a month and come to CTV to do Into the Light. And I didn't want to do it, and I had some friends who introduced me to my church and introduced me to CTV, and I've been doing it for seven years. And it was a good choice. It was a wise choice. But the week leading up to the show, I'm kind of like in a, not a full-blown frenzy, but it's like, here we go again. You know, I come to the studio, I have a pen, I have a notebook, I have a Bible, and I have a voice. And God gave me a voice and he says that he'll show me where to go and he'll tell me what to say. And I was sitting in a church in, um, in Ozone Park, Queens, way back in the late 80s, I believe it was. And it was Nativity Church. It was 5, 5 p.m. Mass. I went to two churches. I think I went to New Life Fellowship in the morning on Queens Boulevard, and I went to Catholic Church at night. And the Monsignor was given a sermon. And it was from Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 8. And it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. One cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The post of the door moved at the voice of him who cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar in his hand. And he laid it on my mouth and said, This has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Go and tell the people. And I took it, I took it very seriously. You know, I was, 
I went back to the the, the, the sacristy and you know I I was friendly with Monsignor Taylor and you know I said the word really really got to me you know and and I I um it I wanted to have my my lips purged you know and I didn't know a lot about God I didn't know a lot about the Bible but I was looking and I didn't even know what I was looking for you know and I get a job no I'd volunteer I would volunteer in a church on Queens Boulevard and I would do the the cassette tapes you know it was like a media ministry and I would make the tapes and sell them at the book table and, and then later on a few years later I would when I left that church I went to church in in Manhattan and I started volunteering in 2002 and I volunteered for like four years and I and I went there and you know I I did the I did the tapes and everything and in 2006 a job opened up and I went to work there from 2006 to 2000 and like 2011 you know and all because like I believe if you're willing to volunteer even though you get, don't get paid there comes a reward as a result of making the choice to freely give I freely gave of my time of my talent and of my treasure you know my offering to the Lord in, in tithes and offerings and somewhere along the line I believe that God circumcised my heart he took my heart out my stony heart and he put his heart in and I started to love everybody I had I was kind I was compassionate and I didn't the, the turn the change was so subtle that I didn't that I didn't recognize it you know it's sort of like a frog that he's in water you know and the water's cool and everything and then they turn the temperature up a little and it's a little warmer a little warmer and a little warmer and then all of a sudden the frog is toast he's gone because he got comfortable you know he thought the water was inviting and everything but and the enemy will come and he'll turn up the heat when we make that decision to to turn our will and our lives over to in the beginning it was a power greater than me it wasn't it wasn't Jesus it wasn't God you know I, I learned out that there was a God and, and it wasn't me and I had subtle hints and I heard I heard like it wasn't audible voices but I had to come to trust there's a verse in um, Proverbs 3 5 and 6 it says trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding acknowledge him in all your ways and he will make your path straight so I knew God had a plan I trusted God with what I thought was all my heart and I continued to volunteer and I would I would volunteer I would volunteer I would volunteer 2010 was um, a rough year and I was in my basement in my apartment over in near Pitkin Avenue in Queens right down the block from the track and I wrote I wrote on my laptop 
I said, God, I'm ready. I said, God, I'm willing. I said, God, you're able. I lost my job. I lost my income. I lost my apartment. I wound up on my friend's couch for a month. And I wound up in a shelter in Bushwick called Ready, Willing, and Able. And that was my prayer. God, I'm ready. God, I'm willing. God, you're able. It wasn't fun. But we had to play nice together. You know, like if you get into fights or something, you get kicked out. What are you going to do? Be homeless, homeless? We have a joke around here. We talk about being homeless, homeless. But everybody has a story. And Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave. And he was with me in the shelter. And I was able to... Um, the, the first couple of weeks, you got paid 50 cents. You got $15 a week, like 50 cents an hour to clean the kitchen and stuff and everything, or clean the hallways. And then you get a job. I was making like $7.40 an hour for, for 30 hours. It was $222. Um, a hundred went to rent. 32 went into a fund when you got, when you graduated from the program. And a hundred went into your, you know, a hundred went into your pocket, you know, and, um, I went in there on, on March 23rd, uh, 2000 and, um, 2011, and, and I got out on um, January, on June, July 2nd, 2012. And um, I said another prayer before I left. You know, I had to get out. I was there for, uh, I was there for nine months. and. It's like a nine-month program, and I was there for 15 months, and I said, God, send me anywhere, but don't send me to Staten Island. Ta-da! So he knows the thoughts and plans he has for me, plans for hope and a future, and I had to go through the chaos. I had to go through the uncertainty. I had to go through the homelessness. Um, there's this, um, this woman on TV, she says, um, there are no drive-through breakthroughs. You gotta go through to get through. And there's, there's lessons along the way. You know, I, I learned how to play nice with others. I did service. I had a Bible study in the shelter on Sunday nights. I was chosen to lead a group for the clients. It was clients helping clients that didn't answer to the staff. And it was like a, a relapse prevention program. And I made the choice I would get a pass on Sundays to go to church and I didn't have to be back to the facility until 10 o'clock. But I took this commitment seriously and I would, I would be back. I think the, I'm not sure if the, the, the program was from six to, I think it was from six to seven or seven to eight. And, um, you know, I did it because I took my commitment seriously. And I believe if you're faithful with the little bit God gives you or gave me, we're going to be faithful in more. You know, more responsibility, more, more service, more showing up. You now, my church used to have... Um, barbecues on Thursday in the community. We used to get like 30, 40 people 
from the neighborhood. They, we used to, I still go to um, International Christian Center at 1501 um, Richmond Avenue. You know, and I found that because I met somebody in the neighborhood over here and they invited me to, uh, they invited me to a service. They called it a, a praise and worship and healing service. And I went there, it was August 31st, and it was this couple from Pennsylvania, uh, Greg and Robin Hubbard. And it was my first time in International Christian Center. And I've been going ever since. I got involved. I believe when you're in ministry and you give your life to the Lord, life is like being on an airplane. And you're on an airplane and you're flying at 30,000 feet. And your time is up where you have been. And you're moving to another level. So you're on this plane at 30,000 feet. And there's this new plane at 30,000 feet. This is the old plane. You walk across the wingspan and you make it safely. You sit down in your new assignment and you get active. You know, lots of people go to different churches. You know, when we were out there drinking and drugging and gambling, we would go bar hopping. We would follow bartenders or barmaids or after hours. And now that we're in the church, if people don't like something, they, they hear something they don't like, they leave the church. So they went from being bar hopping to church hopping. And that's no good because we're supposed to be rooted and grounded in love. And it's each one teach one and each one reach one. You know, we're starting a mentorship program, a discipleship program. When Jesus said to James and John and uh, Peter and Philip, you know, follow me. You know, we want to be on the same page because there's a lot of people on Staten Island who need the Lord. And we need to pray against, you know, the, the suicides and the, and the opiates and everything that, that are going around. But God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. By a roadway in the wilderness, he leads me. Rivers in the desert will I see. Heaven and earth will fade but his word will still remain and he will do something new today. So I'm blessed, I'm grateful. It's the second Friday of the month and I'm here and I just want you to know that God's no respect of persons and if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. He cleaned me up, he took my heart out, he put his heart out, he put his heart in and I played I play nice with people today, you know. I want to see them do good. I want to encourage them, you know. I want to thank you for watching Into the Light. We're, we're glad you're there. Be blessed. And we'll see you next time. God bless you.